Fantastic. And the last question I have, if I could speak to, to Rafael and, uh, and Donald Cerrone, please. Uh, Conor McGregor spoke with the media this week. Shockingly, he made headlines with what he had to say. Uh, he said he would move up to lightweight after this fight and that each of you guys would happily give up the fight that you have right now to fight him because of the money and the attention that it would bring to you that it would change your life. When he says that, what's, how do you feel about those comments? Do you agree with his, his evaluation? Yeah, uh, right now my focus is on Cerrone. And so if you want to move up, I'm here. It's going to be easy money. That wasn't the question, but ask yourself, ask yourself truthfully. If Dana rang you and said, you don't have to fight Cerrone, you can fight McGregor, even though Cerrone was still fit, would you take it? You're damn right you take of it. Course, man. Easy because money. Of course, man. Because I change your bum life. Money, man. I can make you Look rich. You, man. I change your bum life. You fight me, it's a celebration. Of course you can. I would beat you. When you uh, sign to uh, fight me, it's a celebration. You ring back home. You ring your wife. Baby, we done it. We're rich, baby. Conor McGregor made us rich. Break out the red panties. We're rich, baby. So don't say you would not take that fight because you would take that fight like everyone else up here would take the fight against me if it was offered, regardless of belts or any of that shit. I'm the money fight in the male, male shit at all weight division, so fuck everybody else up here. Cow uh, yeah, I'll it's red panty night when you sign to fight me, yeah? Back at your back at home with your wife. It's a celebration. Connor, Connor has no right coming up to 55. There's no way he's not going to stand a chance. We're too big for him. We're too strong. So you can take your little English ass and get on. You're too slow and too stiff. You're stiff as a board. I'd snap you in half. And, and that's it. Yes. I see stiffness when I look in that 155-pound division. Slow, stiff. I feel like they're stuck in the mud almost. The featherweights, they hit like flyweights. So it's nice down there just destroying them and killing that whole division. But I have my eye on that 155 division, and I see them all stuck in the mud in there. So Connor, we'll see, a, we'll see a, over time. But guess what? Have I been wrong yet? Have I been wrong yet? No. You have a monster right here at 45, Auto about to beat your ass. You've beat nobody, and you think you're going to come up to 155 and make a statement? Come on, man. Sit the fuck down. Yeehaw! Who's got the next question? Go ahead, sir. Hey. Elias here with uh, Fox Sports. Got a question each for uh, Joe, Dustin, and Connor. Joe, you're finally getting attention at big events like this. Another spin-off off my name. You're welcome, Dana and Lorenzo and Frank. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So, Joe, you're a part of big events, the likes of which Connor seems to really relish uh, and enjoy. For you, so far, how do you feel? Are, you, are they giving you extra energy, or is it just part of the job so far? Yeah, for me, um, you know, it's great to be up here, experience a whole lot. Um, but, you know, my job is to fight, and that's what I love doing. And uh, that's what I'm going to keep continuing to do, just keep beating people. Thanks, Joe. And Dustin, obviously you've got a, a huge fight right here and a big challenge. Is any small part of this fight, though, an extra appeal in your mind, like the idea of getting a rematch with Connor? You said you wanted it. Duffy is his own challenge in right, but being that he's the last guy to beat Connor, does that add any extra fuel to the fire for you? I said it's the only appeal. That fight is the only appeal to win. So you can get the, maybe climb back up and get to fight me and get that money fight. Yeah, you know, right now my focus is, is on Joe Duffy. I'm excited to be part of another main event. Um, Irish fans are familiar with me, so I'm going to go over to Dublin. And, and uh, I'm excited about that. I'm ready for that, that step in my career right now. You know, it's a big fight. Big things happen after you win main events, and, and that's what I plan on doing. Thanks. And Connor, you've answered the first two, but this one's actually for you. Over here to your right. <laughs> Obviously, you've got bigger things on your mind and in your mind, but if the fight made sense money-wise eventually, would you like to avenge that loss to Joe Duffy? 100%. If the money's right, if he can climb up, and this is a great opportunity for each man to climb back into, that, into, that, uh, into the lottery ticket. You know what I mean? So um, I wish them well, and I... When, when they announced the fight, I said, it's good business because you've got to build up other schmucks to make a fight with me. So allow them to keep doing that. It's, it's, it's intelligent business, and that's why, that's why the UFC is where it is.
Hi, uh, Chris Matthews with KLAS TV. And Connor, let me ask you: at this thing last, uh, what was it last spring? When I asked you what you what your plans were, Connor, for uh, for 2015, you mentioned I'm going to go out and I'm going to break the records, I'm going to break the live pay-per-view and, and the numbers and so forth. Now, what does Mystic Mac have to say about 2016? 2016, I, well, the end of 2015 means the end of the featherweight division. They are all dead in the water. It's done. If, if the Brazilian shows up, I hope he does. I, 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 who knows? He's petrified. He's the so-called pound-for-pound pound number one, but he's quaking in his boots over there. You, can't, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I hope he shows up. But if he shows up December 12th, the division will be killed, like I predicted. And then it's on to the 155 stuck-in-the-mud division. With Connor talking about moving up, do y'all feel like, do y'all want to get that shot? Regardless of whoever's up there, whoever wins y'all fight December 11th? Especially you, Frank. I know you've been itching for a shot at, at, the, at the notorious one. Yeah, I want the belt. More, more than anything, I want the belt. That's what I want. I got to take care of business against Chad on December 11th, and whoever has the belt, that's who I want to fight. And Chad, I know you want another shot, don't you? Yeah, man. I mean, these are both guys that I've lost to. So, of course, you know, if, if I get in there, I beat Frankie. You know, whoever has the belt, just like Frankie said, I'm, I'm fucking going after. So, uh, how, we'll see. How big deal you want a McGregor with a full count? I mean, obviously, that would be fucking ideal. You know, I fought the guy on two weeks' notice. But, I mean, let's see if this guy stays in the featherweight division long enough to fight me. I fought you on three weeks' notice, too. No, you did not. If, 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 let, let's make a bet here. Let's, if, if you fucking have the How much? to do anything. <laughs> with that yeah. half a million. You're making bets with that half a million I gave you? 48,000 you, you went from. You went from 48,000 to half a million. Blah, blah, Thank blah, me blah, blah, and be blah, grateful. Blah, 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 be blah. grateful. Okay, you done fucking talking now? <laughs> Take this fight on two weeks notice with me, motherfucker, and I'll whoop your ass. Two weeks, three weeks, I tell <laughs> I butchered your face. I, I KO'd you. You, you were curled up like a bitch. You. You were curled up like a bitch. You were curled up like a bitch. I like, butchered your body. You couldn't even lift your hands up. You couldn't even lift your hands up. You can do that all you want, but at the end of the day, the, the knockout speaks for itself, and you hit the deck like a bitch. Fucking idiot. All right, you next question. You know what? I wanted to speak to you. I, wanted to, I did want to speak to you because you called yourself the Mike Tyson of the featherweight Dude, division. You fucking stop drinking the I just want to ask you a question. You called yourself the Mike Tyson of the featherweight division. And I marched forward, stood yeah, in the how, pocket, how and did, said, what have you got? Your, and you hit like a fucking straw away. Yeah. You hit like a straw away. Let me, let me see the Mike Tyson. your left eye, buddy. You're going to fucking have that. Next question. Life. Every time you look in the mirror, you're going to think of me. And uh, one more question here for Donald Cerrone. Earlier in the week, you had tweeted that uh, two days until you saw McGregor, you're sitting right behind him right now. Have you two had any encounters besides the interaction that you've just had now? And what is your message to McGregor about the 55 division and the Shark Tank it is? Oh, no, he, he's real good at talking out in front of the public, but when we all stand in the background there, he got nothing to say, so uh, the... Uh... <laughs> So I, I stood back there for 30 minutes right next to him and nothing to say to me. But uh, he was very cordial with my man next to me. And they, of course, we get out here, he wants to run his mouth. But it's good. You know, he sells the fights. But he comes to 155, he's going to bend his little ass over and knock the fucking lucky charm. See about that. First, you've got to get through a guy that whooped your ass already. So why would I waste my time with a guy? You, you're fighting a guy that whooped your ass next. So you've got to come through that. And let me say, and then I'll consider. I'll check the numbers. I'll discuss it with Frank. And I'll decide whether I'll change your bum life as well. I just asked Aldo about, uh, he went to Tough, the house, you know, and he faced off with McGregor. I just want to know how did he feel and um, if he thought that McGregor was a little surprised with his presence there. Então, é, primeiramente ele ficou surpreso quando me viu. É, ainda mais a cada dia que passa o que eu vejo que, que é um palhaço, é, que ele gosta de fazer o pessoal rir e todo mundo gosta de, de ouvir ele falar porque todo mundo fica rindo da cara dele. Isso ele acha que está se sentindo bem. Eu vejo ele assim, é, onde falei, então ele tomou um susto quando me viu, não esperava, foi uma surpresa. Não vejo ele como nada, continua ainda. Que pena que eu não pude lutar no dia, do, dia da, da luta que ia para acontecer. Mas se Deus quiser, eu estarei, estarei, vou chegar e vou calar a boca dele no dia 12 de dezembro. Sim. He was really surprised when he saw me there, you know, uh, and I, I think he's a clown. He likes to talk a lot and he likes to make people laugh, but that's about it, you know, and um, 
when, I, I'm, I'm really sorry that I couldn't fight him the last time. And when, when it comes time to fight him now, I'm going to kick his ass. Uh, can you say what you thought when, when you saw him there? What was your reaction? I, I honestly, the first thing I said to him was, wow, I didn't think I'd see you again. So I was actually happy to see him. I shook his hand. I embraced him. I gave him a little cuddle. I told him everything's going to be A-OK. -okay. It will be over before you know it. Just please show up December 12th. So I, I don't want to scare him anymore. He's petrified. He went running before. So now I'm going to take the opposite approach. Cuddle him. Look after him. Whisper sweet nothings. Tell him it's going to be all right. It will be over quick. And hopefully get him, in, get him into that octagon December 12th. And then end his career. A question for Jose. You've now been you know, doing these press conferences for quite some time with Connor, dating back to March. So it's almost six months of of doing this, does this sort of feel like a bad dream that you keep having to be here doing that and not being able to actually fight this guy? Você tem feito várias é, várias tours de mídia com o Conor, né? Já há seis meses. Isso parece um pesadelo ficar sempre nessas conferências em vez de lutar com ele? Não, eu vejo engraçado. Eu gosto de rir, então ele me faz rir. É, lutar vai chegar o dia. Eu só estou esperando isso, já estou preparando e, e sei que vou vencer. Então eu só tenho que rir. So it's me hasta. No, I think it's funny. I love laughing, you know. I, when it comes time to fight, I'm going to beat him. So it doesn't bother me at all. I was there July 11th. He was not. Porra, o cara entrou na porrada pro Chad. O cara teve duas semanas, o cara tá de férias pescando. O cara, coitado, pra ser uma tartaruga, deu até pena. Será que nunca ninguém ensinou pra ele o que é um jiu-jitsu? Que ensinou uma defesa de queda? Já viu falar de wrestling na vida dele? Já viu falar, meu? Só faz falar, só faz pessoas rir. E nisso ele acredita, e fica rindo sozinho. Porra, não é nada. Chad was, Chad was kicking his ass. Has he heard about jiu-jitsu? Does he know what wrestling is? Chad took that fight with, with two weeks notice. It looked like a turtle. Well, at the, at, the end of it, at the end of it, he was the turtle. But as far as I'm concerned, when you fought Chad, he rearranged your face. You, st you haven't looked right since. After that five-round Mendez fight, which arguably we could have went to him, you look like you've had a stroke. The left side of your face is drooping. I'm worried about you. I, honestly, I'm worried. I, I love you. I love you like my bitch. Semana I just want to make sure you're okay. Semana passada, eu Get yourself aqui. medically tested, because that um your face is drooping to the left. Comigo. Ainda viu que ele apertar minha mão ainda. Porra, isso é um palhaço, porra. Porra, é ou não é, meu irmão? Ou tu tá é uma pessoa ou não é? Primeiro, me viu, ficou com medo. Ainda com a calça rasgada, ainda passou mal vergonha, disse que se veste bem, não sei o quê. É um merda. Chega, meu irmão. Me vê, ainda vem apertar minha mão. Porra, é ou não é, meu irmão? É um baralho, duas caras, um joke mesmo. You know, this guy came in and, and tried to shake my hand. Is it or isn't it? I mean, you know, he's talking about dressing well, he's got his pants all torn up, you know? I mean, who is he? Thank you, I do look good, I know that. <laughs> All right, on that note, I'm gonna actually bring Connor and, and, and Aldo up here to square Wait off. Wait until you quick. hear this. Wait until you hear this one. They're gonna square off here right now. Jose Aldo has to catch a plane. He is the best man at a wedding. Jose uh, has to catch a plane. <laughs> Can, what? How the fuck am I supposed to get excited about this thing and he's gone? He doesn't want to be here. He's not going to be there December 12th like he was not there July 11th. So I'll tell everyone up here, 145 right through to 170, prepare for this fight because I don't think he's showing up. It, it's the opportunity of a lifetime you have. So get ready and don't use Chad's excuse of camps and all this bullshit. Stay ready because he's gone running.
over quick and he's gone. What am I supposed to do? He's gone running again. I don't know whether he'll be back. All I know is that I will be there. December 12th, like I always am there. People are always saying about the talk, and I talk, and I talk, and I talk, but guess fucking what? I back it up. I back it up. All right, next question. I just had two, uh, two last ones, if I may. Yep. Um, just wanted to ask Connor, because I understand for, 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 tomorrow you are returning to Dublin for the uh, first time in many months. What, what do you expect that, uh, that reception to be like? Do you have any plans? Is there some kind of parade, party? Stop, a parade is heavy, heavy traffic, Gary Elias. Serious, a parade, like, that's insane. I mean, I cannot wait to go home and touch that home soil and feel that fresh air. The desert heat's crazy out here. It's crazy, crazy air out here, and I miss my hometown. But I'm going home to see my family, my friends. Take this gold belt, take this hard book home. Show them what I have earned, that I've been away and I've been working. And then just enjoy, enjoy the fruits of the fight business with the people that are close to me. And I cannot wait. Parades and all, you know, it's amazing and all that. But I just want to, I just want to go home and, and, and see my family. You know what I mean? So I've been on the road more than anybody has been on the road uh, uh, up here. Um, I've worked my ass off for the right to go home uh, tonight, so I cannot wait. Uh, a question for uh, Frankie. Frankie, we, we know, you know you've had a long career of, of not talking crap, and you know, you've never really cared who you fought. It's always been a bit about, about a belt, about accomplishments. But you, know, you have Conor McGregor saying he's probably leaving the division if he wins the title next. I got to believe that somewhere that doesn't sit right with you, that you, you would like a crack at this guy. So with him sitting there, I mean, is, is, is there something you would like to put into words, or is that just not true, and, and you're, you're content never fighting this guy if he moves on? No, I mean, for sure. Well, what's he been saying over and over again? He's the money fight. I mean, I'd be stupid not to want that fight. That's all I ask. To be honest. To come up here and tell the damn truth. Good on you, Frankie. Uh, Luke, a, a fairly big fight coming up for you, and uh, you're going to have to take a back seat, it appears, to, to the Conor McGregor show. Uh, how do you feel about that? I imagine, you know, financially, eyeballs-wise, it's not a bad thing for you because more people will be tuned into that fight, but any disrespect or, or frustration that people are, seem to be kind of looking that fight over right now because of this big one that's on the top of the card? I'm happy to be where I am and be in the fight with Weidman and uh, to go do what I'm going to do. You know, I'm just going to... I'm going to go up and I'm going to show up. I'm going to put on a performance. I'm going to take the show just like Robbie did last time. So that's, uh, I'm going to play my role. Glad to be on the card, the big money card. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, make myself be heard, no doubt. You're welcome. On the right. Uh, I've got two questions. Dana, if Aldo backs out, what's going to happen? Who's going to fight McGregor? Because um, he, he probably will. That's, that's, you know, that's what he does. But if he does, who's he going to fight? Well, I'm, I'm counting on him coming, so I'm, okay. not even, I'm not even thinking about that yet. Don't All be right. so negative. Come on. No, I'm not being negative. I'm just being real, as Connor says. Uh, hey, Connor, what's up, brother? What's up? I'm from Sandy Mountain Island. That's where my parents are from. Hey, listen, bro. Um, Minnie Mendez said that when you were smashing him in front of the whole world that you were whispering sweet nothings in his ear. Will you be learning more Portuguese when you smash the shit out of Aldo in the ring? Just a question I want to know. That's all. And if you do, what will you say, Connor? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I think he can speak English, though, that little Brazilian weasel. Well, I think he can speak Brazilian. Or he, I think he can speak English, but I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't, I'll have fun in there if he shows up. But whoever's in there, I'll have fun in there. Uh, I don't know if you can see it from here, but he was shitting himself just over this side, too. The look that he had before he backed out of the fight, he was crapping in his pants sitting up there. All just right, nice to meet you, sir. Yeah, have a I'm great just, day. I'm just, uh, I'm just speaking the ahead. truth. What's your question, sir? Hey, uh, for Dana... Uh, you got Conor McGregor talking about moving up to uh, 155 already. You know, I would say that he's got a lot of work to do at 145. Would you want him to move up so soon after the Aldo fight, presuming he wins? And if and when he does move to 155, uh, would that be an immediate title shot at 155, or would you like to see him fight his way back up there? Well, the, when, when guys want to move a weight class, you know, that's a tough weight class for Conor to make that weight. Um, you know, I, I don't really mess with people who want to move... The only one I've ever really talked about it with was, was Frankie when Frankie fought at 55. I will admit that. I, I terrorized him to move to 45. Um, but other than that, I don't, really, I don't really mess with guys when they want to move a weight class. They know their bodies. They know what's going on. And, uh, you know, we'll see how that thing plays out. The fight's got to happen first. The fight's going to happen. We'll see what happens, and then we'll go from there. Also, um, 
if Connor wins the fight against Aldo, would Aldo get an immediate title shot? If Connor beats Aldo, would Aldo get an immediate yeah. rematch? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. would, yeah. would he get an immediate rematch if he wins? Yes. I have no idea. How, how, how can we make, I don't know, I, I didn't see the fight. The fight's gotta happen. Well, maybe it's a first round knockout. Maybe it, it's a five round war like Mendez and who knows, Let's, you gotta see how the fight goes first before you could ever make any decisions on what would happen next. Got it, thanks Dana. All right, you, you, you're acting like Ara Hawani. Connor, um, now that you're all famous and all that, does that <laughs> hype get to you? Like, you know, you're making a lot of money. Are you afraid you might lose that hype, lose the money? I always said, the, the finer things push me on. So when you start getting a little bit of taste of that finer life, some people might get complacent and get comfortable and get sloppy. But me, I push through and I work extra damn hard for it. And that's, that's where I feel right now. Coming through that camp, the opponent change, the injury, the ultimate fighter, the whole lot. I feel reinvigorated now. I feel that nobody can do the work that I do in this business. And, and, and it has pushed me on. So that's why I'm pushing here hard, and I'm ready to go and get every number in the game and continue taking this company to the next level. Hi, my question is for Mick Gregor. Um, you've had a lot of words with a few guys up there. How many more fights are you going to do? And then what's your plans after UFC? Um, I, I don't know. I'm just teeing them up left and right, and I'll knock them down left and right. So we'll see. But I'm only 27 years of age, just turned. Every number in the game, UFC featherweight world champion. I'm only, I'm only, I'm only warming up here. <laughs> All right, last question right here, my man. Uh, this is a question for both McGregor and uh, Cowboy. I see you both winning the championship coming up soon. Could you see yourself fighting each other coming up in the next year? Yeah, go ahead, McNugget. You want to answer that or no? Ladies first. <laughs> McGregor, you're winning. Don't worry about that. Right, Love you, cowboy. Uh, yeah, ma'am, you looked pretty pissed when I said that was it. What, do you have, let, let's do your question. Did they answer you? Are you done, sir? Did, did you have another question? No, that, did they? Uh, I think they opted not to answer that question, I think. Connor, that's the real belt, baby. That's the real belt. <laughs> McGregor! That's the real belt.